Muy buenos días, hermanos y hermanas. La paz de Dios sea con ustedes. <coughs> I will try to preach in English. <laughs> My dear siblings in Christ, grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I am bringing greetings to all of you from your siblings in Christ in El Salvador. We bring with us our gratitude for the support you have given us in so many years as a companion synod. You have made us feel the love of God through your accompaniment. It is so wonderful to see how we, the Lutherans, are always ready to serve our sufferings neighbors. None of us can touch God directly, but the way to get closer to him is by serving our brothers and sisters to serve the humanity. Many of you throughout these years have left your comfort zones and have taken seriously the commitment of caring your neighbor and have given us your, your company that has often brought life itself to the communities in my country. Your synod has been a companion synod of the Lutheran Church in El Salvador since the Civil War, when thousand people were killed there, and nobody... <clears throat> look to take care of us. But the church, the, the Sierra Pacific Synod, was, was one of the first churches in the United States that came to walk together with us. And in that way, we saved so many lives of people in the communities in El Salvador. Today, we celebrate here the Epiphany, the manifestation of the Lord to all nations And in this, in this text, there is an image full of many symbolism and trying to explain everything will take us days. And with my English, of course, weeks. <laughs> <laughs> But let us reflect of something that really catches our attention, sometimes that touches on our heart and make us reflect today. The mystery of, of the Word of God is that Uh, every day reveals us something new, something different. Even if that was the same text we read last year, we are not the same person that we was one year ago. And that's the mystery of the, of the um, gospel. This story tells us about the visit of the wise men, and also the Bible does not specify how many they were. Tradition says that possible three and that they represented all cultures and all nations of the East. In, in one way or another, people from many nations come to see Jesus, to worship him, and in this case, was the three wise men. It is uh, the encounter of Jesus with all humanity, not only with one people. Those three wise men saw a star on the horizon and they set out to search for, the, for that child who had been born. A real model of humility in the face of the search, the true. Those wise men knew God's prophecy and when they saw the star, they did not hesitate to, li to leave everything to go looking for the newborn child. My brothers and sisters, when have we make a stop in our life, our lives to contemplate the start that guide us on the path to Jesus? The start that encourage us to reach for what give us peace, the start that encourages us to leave our comfort zone. Perhaps we cannot see any start because the lights around us blind us. 
Thus, spotlights that obscures, obscures our path. I'm sorry, sometimes there are some words that are difficult to, to pronounce. <laughs> that stress us. Those spotlights that do not allow us to walk. The spotlights of the indifference. The spotlights, those spotlights that distract our lives and separate us from the grace, from the start of the Lord's grace. We cannot ignore the theological significance of the visit of the wise men. Also, they were not youths. That's a word that is difficult for me. Youths. They worship the king of the youths. Where is, where is the born king of the youths? Somehow, they knew that the reign of that child will be universal. This child was born to be the king, not just to be the king of, of Israel. He was born to be the king of the entire world. His reign is universal, and the visit of the wise man is nothing more than a preamble of what was going to happen after resurrection of Jesus. This child was born to re revere as a king by every man or woman throughout the world, language or nation. This child, <clears throat> sorry, about all religion and culture, Jesus is the way, the true and the life. There is no other way. There is no other true. Every knee will kneel. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of the humanity. But not everyone <clears throat> will recognize the supreme authority of Jesus, as this passage uh, or text tell us today. We have already heard how King Herod was worried when he heard the question of those wise men, where is the new king of Jesus? Where is the new king of the Jews? Hero was actually a usurper of the throne of Israel. He was not a Jewish, and he was afraid of being dethroned by the child who had been born. He was terrified of anything that sounded like a conspiracy. Hero killed almost his entire family for fear of being dethroned. Imagine what could have gone through that man's head when he heard, heard the wise men who had come from the east and say that they came to worship the newborn king. Hero asked the priest and the scribe of Jerusalem where this king will be born. The priest knows and tells him where the king should be born because they have studied the scriptures and knew the prophecies, whoever they have not gone to worship him. Those people knew about the prophecies, but they did not want to do anything to find out if the promises the promised king had really been born. They have not searched the true. And it all ended in a blue bath when Herod ordered all the children under two years old to be killed to ensure that no one will jeopardize his power over the people of Israel. Herod reacted with murderous fury, but my brothers and sisters, no one can stop God's plan. The reign of Jesus cannot be destroyed, not even with the deception of Herod intended, as Herod intended, who called those men to ask them, if you find him, come and tell me so I can also come and worship him. The story of, the evil, of this evil king has been repeated in many moments in the story of our world. Leaders who have seen their corrupt power and injustice threatened, have massacred, 
entire people, and in many cases, supported even by the church that claims to be Christian. In my own country, the government killed thousands of thousands of people in the 80s just because their power, they felt their power threatened. My brothers and sisters, knowledge does not mean that you go. Knowing things does not mean that you love them. Sometimes we can have a lot of knowledge of the true, but how do we live in love? How much are you able to leave your comfort son and go out to meet your brothers in need? Go out to meet Jesus. Those scribes and priests can symbolize all those people who know that they have to do, but they do not do it. Evil has always been present. And hero is one of those who seek Jesus, but not to worship him, but to destroy him. My brothers and sisters, why are you looking for Jesus today? What is your pur purpose of seeking Jesus? Those wise men do not arrive to a palace. They arrive to a very humble house to worship that child who has been born. A contrasting place because that this king comes to manifest himself in the simplest, in the most humble. If you look for Jesus, you have to look for him with an open heart because you can find him in the least expected place, in the neighbor who needs your compassion. Possible the star is also calling us today to visit Jesus. But do we see clearly the way? Three gifts the wise men offer, gold, frankincense, and mirror. If you seek Jesus to worship him, to then seek him, get to know him, and offer him the best of yourself, being subject to his roles, rules and commandments. And which are they? The loves of love and compassion, those that give us freedom and plenitude. Wanting and pretending to worship Jesus without offering the best of ourselves is the same as not wanting to worship him. He's not only king, he is also God, and we have the, to worship him with our constant prayer. It is not just a social work, but a spiritual work of recognizing him as divinity, as the true God. Following Jesus is also finding him in the neighbor in need, in the brother who suffers, the wise men did not stay alone in the temple. They went to look for the king. And they found eating in the least expected place. Sometimes we become blinded and we want to find Jesus only and exclusively in the sanctuaries and the temples when he is also in the needed, in the migrant, in the hungry, in the sick, in the thirsty, in the naked, in the rejected, in the child, in the orphan, in the widow, in the wounded, in each one of our neighbors. There we must also be able to offer the king our gold, our frankincense, and our mirror, our time, our camar camaraderie, I hope you understand that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Jesus is in the face of each of our brothers and sisters. And today's invitation 
is for us to go to meet him. Today, <clears throat> we celebrate the meeting, the manifestation that God is for everyone, all nations, come and search of him. It was not only for the people of Israel, but absolutely for everyone. This God is for you. This God is for me. But we must offer our gold and our incense and our mirror in such a way that our act of justice and truth is pleasing in the eyes of this king. The story of the wise men is rich in symbolism and has been a search of inspiration in the celebration of the birth of Jesus around the world. Their pursuit and worship represented the universality, universality of the message of hope and salvation associated with the birth of Christ. That was not a star. That was not a comet. It was the glory of God that guide those wise men, and they return home with God in their hearts. Do we have put Jesus, Jesus, our King, in a prominent place in our life? This story is light for our lives. Let's not leave here today being part of the darkness. Trust God to lead you into the future. Amen. Amen. Feliz Navidad.